someone was telling me that Pastor Tan's not ready for Alec Pierce. Yeah, okay, buddy. <laughs> and people are telling me that John, Jonathan Taylor. I understand Jonathan Taylor. He's he's playing exceptional football, but this is not the eighteen hundred yard back that we're seeing in Indy. And we're yeah. talking about the Broncos defense. Hey, guys, Colts fans, we're talking about the team leading the NFL in pressures and sacks. Come back to this. The Colts are not beating the Broncos. Welcome back to another episode of the Broncos Avenue Podcast. I'm your host, Amir Farrow, with our co-host, Jordan Mackey and Jordan Lopez, here to preview the Denver Broncos Week 15 matchup against the Indianapolis Colts Broncos, heading into this one 8-5. and five. There is a lot at stake for this matchup. The Broncos currently um, at a 75% playoff chance. If they do win this one, it'll jump up to a 91%. But if they lose, it will fall down to 51%. And uh, the, the Colts, their play, playoff chances will jump up to a 51% as well, meaning the Broncos and Colts will have a tied playoff uh, percentage, even though they'll have, they'll have a better record. So um, there's a lot of implications this week with the playoff seedings and everything. Um, we'll talk about that and more. Um, and then some Broncos news we're going to react to as well. So if you guys are listening to this episode, make sure you guys leave a like, comment down below your thoughts, and subscribe to the channel as well. But, um, boys, how are you guys doing? It's been a while. We had a bye week last week. Well, it's been good, man. Um, just kind of happy where the Broncos are sitting at right now. I've been good. The semester is over. Um, my Spurs, Stephon Castle, got me hyped every single game, win being them boys. So overall, I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm doing good. I mean, I've been I've been uh, extremely busy uh, as of late. Just got my uh, basketball season uh, underway over here. So literally have to go to a game right after this. But, I mean, Broncos are doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I mean – Sunday might be one of the biggest games in Denver, I mean, in several years that I can remember. I mean, this game is going to probably make or break the season, if we're being quite honest. Yeah, I mean, is it crazy to say this is our biggest game since, like, 2016 playoffs? I would I would say this is the biggest game probably, like, since last year. I think the game against – I think the last year we were saying the same thing with the game against the Patriots, Patriots how big yeah. the game that was. And we all know how that ended. But I think this time around, you know, things can be quite different. Uh, I mean, I ain't going to lie. We lost to Bailey Zappi last year. But, I mean, look, you got Anthony Richardson. We're going to see how it goes. Yeah. Um, all right. So, first, I want to talk about some uh, breaking news we had this morning. The Broncos agreed to a four-year contract extension with Garrett Bowles. Um, the official numbers were $82 million, $42 million guaranteed. Uh, Garrett Bowles will be turning 33 in May this offseason. Um, so he'll likely, it's looking like if he if he does play out his contract, he's going to retire a Denver Bronco, which is pretty awesome. We haven't had that in a while where a Bronco played out his full career and retired yeah. with the team. I don't want to speak too soon, but um, what would you guys think about that uh, contract, the length of it and the numbers and everything? Um, you know, I've said it before on here. I think left tackle, and I tweeted about it as well. Left tackle is one of the hardest positions to get right in the league. It's one of the hardest positions to replace. Um, you have to be really lucky. That's why guys like Joe Alt go top five. You don't get guys like that coming in every single year. And, you know, just the the season he's had, I mean, Garrett Bowles still leads the league. I think he's top three in penalties. But in terms of overall protection, I mean, this dude is – it doesn't really – you can't really get any better than what he's been doing. I mean – Every week, it's like he's averaging. I think PFF always puts out he's allowing like the lowest percentage of pressure rate um, week by week in the year. And I mean, he's been he's one of the best left tackles in the league and pass pro, run pro. He's solid. But I mean, look, man, when you got a rookie quarterback, you can't be shifting the offensive line, going out and replacing tackle of all things. So, hey, I'm fine by it. Um, you know, in say in two years, the Broncos want to move on. They can. Like, yeah. it's not, I don't think it's that. Like, you know, well, he, no one's going to want to trade for him. No one, anybody will trade for a tackle in this league. But I think I'm, I'm glad they got this done. I'm glad the Broncos are getting their contracts done. They're getting them done at times the Bronco fans aren't even expecting it. So I was happy to see the numbers. I know a lot of people are freaking out over 20 million a year, but bro, he's one of the best left tackles in the league in pass protection, like probably top two, top three. So, I mean, you got to get the guy's money. And, um, hey, look, if, if he retires a Bronco, I'm happy. All, I'm, I'm all but happy with it. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. My initial reaction, I, I was sort of shocked. It was like a little mini shock for me because there was a lot of discussions about him, especially after this season, like what we're going to do with him in the off season. You know, what's that kind of plan of action with him? To see it get done now, as soon as it hit and you know, we all got the breaking news notification, I kind of let it just simmer a bit, just get everybody's thoughts about it. And at the end of the day, I, I have to like it because at the end of the day, I think J-Max said it best. 
rookie quarterback, young quarterback, we want to have continuity with on within that offensive line. You don't want to start shifting pieces and stuff like that. Listen, Bulls has come a long way in Denver. Ooh. Rookie year all the way till now. So I'm very happy for him. I mean, I, I remember his very first start all the way till now. I mean, the ups and downs he's been through. And with all fan reactions and criticism from the media, rightfully so. And then now he's stepped up his game and he's honestly one of the best left tackles in the league. So super proud of him, super happy for him and his family now that he gets to stay in Denver. And it's the, uh, I would say it's the uh, Bo Nix effect because I don't know if Bowles is you know, taking that team friendly discount, like Mike Cliff said in his article, yeah. if you don't have a guy like Bo Nix. So uh, yeah, I'm just super happy for him and his family. And hey, more continuity, the the better. Yeah, he has come a long way. I mean, the fact that he went from being absolutely clowned by the fan base to now, this is his second multi-year contract. John Elway gave him one, and then now George Payne and Sean Payne just gave him one, a multi-year contract extension, getting absolutely paid too. Um, well-deserved, $20.5 million, uh, a year. Can't really get too mad about that. At first, I was like four years. I don't know, but J-Mac does bring up a good point. After the first two years, you can really get off that contract because of the guaranteed money and everything is like built mm -hmm. up on the first two years. So um, you yeah. can't really get mad by this contract. Also, this is going to be a really heavily pursued player and free agency this offseason he was going to get paid way more than this so honestly broncos fans that are getting upset about this i don't know why you'd be mad because he i guarantee you this is a this is a friendly discount he would have gotten way north of 21 million per year oh, if yeah. it was a, a like a bad team pursuing him in free agency so a big time get by the broncos um also a, a few more moves that i want to talk about that we missed since we haven't been on the show the last week week or so um the broncos did move on from greg dulcich and josh reynolds who we talked a lot about this offseason um what were your guys' <laughs> thoughts on that the greg dulcich uh, experiment is finally over and josh reynolds they did move on from him after that whole situation with the shooting and everything yeah um i'll start with josh reynolds i felt like they could have kept him for the rest of this season I feel like if anybody should have got a should have got a cut, it should have been Lil Jordan Humphrey. I mean, I'll be completely honest. I'm pretty sure y'all both can agree with me right there. If there was one guy, I would rather have Josh Reynolds coming back from that injury than having Lil Jordan Humphrey on his roster. Um, Greg Dolchik, I mean, we kind of saw the writing on the wall. He, I was just happy. The only thing that Greg Do about Greg Dolchik that made me happy was seeing his name on that inactive list every single week. I mean, it made me so happy to see that. But uh, yeah, that that's one thing I will miss. Looking at that inactive, but his name will not be on there. But I mean, it is what it is. He, I think he went to the Giants. Um, yeah. It is what it is. I mean, look, Sean gave him a shot, kept dropping the ball, was terrible in blocking, and I ain't a lot. George Payton missed on this pick. I mean, drafting the guy with a really bad injury history. We thought the potential could be there if he could just stay healthy. And even when healthy, he wasn't really producing much on the field. Um, and now that tight end room is kind of facing – it, the tight end room is what it is because of that, because of what we banked on Greg Dolchik. So, I mean, both of those guys moving on, it is tough. I think Josh Reynolds is especially tough because what has happened to him, you know, prayers prayers go out to him. I mean, that that whole incident is really ridiculous. And, you know, he, he's going to find his footing in the league, whether that – yeah, because he's in Jacksonville, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but even after this year, he probably won't be in Jacksonville, but he's going to find his footing somewhere in the league. Um, but, yeah, man, that, that whole situation is just – entirely rough i mean the broncos just i guess didn't didn't think he was ready to come back and they didn't want to I, yeah I, I think that they didn't have any more time to keep him on to, to keep him on the ir so it just had to be done but uh yeah it, it's it's extremely tough the greg dosage i think we all that was just we all expected that sooner rather than later the josh reynolds one was a bit more surprising to me i going into the season i wasn't that big of a josh reynolds fan even throughout this whole season while he was playing, I didn't, you know, think highly of him in terms of his skill set as a wide receiver and what he brings to us, especially what we had in our wide receiver room to begin with. But while saying that, I thought, again, uh, J. Max said it, and Amir agrees with us as well, hmm. that we would have thought that Lil Jordan Humphrey would have been the one and not Josh Reynolds, because at least Josh Reynolds can still run block as a wide receiver. He brings that grit as a wide receiver. Some of the same intangibles – little Jordy Humphrey brings because I vividly remember a lot of people telling me the reason why we signed Josh Reynolds is for that running game blocking as a wide receiver. He does all the little things and he also be good in that play action game because usually if you see a run blocking type wide receiver like them, if your defense always like, Hey, they're going to run the ball. Yeah. He's a good play action wide receiver as well. So it, a lot of factors played into that. I was 
again, very surprised about that. Again, I think Josh Reynolds is going to find his footing sooner rather than later, especially next season when when a contending team, because I don't think he's going to go to a team that's not going to be a contender. Again, another contending team is going to call him, and he'll be good there. But just uh, a bit shocked that we kind of went in that direction. But again, hey, it's uh, another starter, per se, that Bo Nix doesn't have. Because again, Greg Dosich came into the season on the 53, and Josh Reynolds did too. And Josh Reynolds was our wide receiver too to start the season. And now he doesn't have that. So again, it just uh, tells you what Nix has to deal with. Dude, it's crazy how like so many things change throughout an NFL offseason and regular season. Like, imagine we told you like early in the offseason, week 15, the Broncos will have already cut Josh Reynolds after signing him to a two year, $11 million contract or $9 million, I can't remember what it was. And they also cut their former third round pick in Greg Dulcich, who a lot of people actually expected him to have like a big season this year in the offense. Um, it's yep. crazy how things change, man. Um, I'm wishing the best of both of those players. Unfortunately, injuries are the main reason why they're not here anymore. Greg Dulcich, uh, it sucks because he was so good his rookie season. We really saw something from him. But as soon as those injuries started piling up, piling up, it feels like he just wasn't able to create separation as well. And then with the drops, like I think it was really just a confidence thing and just like getting in his own head. I really hope the both, uh, really hope the best for both of those guys. The remainder. Uh, time in their NFL career. Um, let's go and jump into these keys to victory for the Broncos Colts game. Um, what do you got for us, J Mac? Uh, so I, I'll get mine real quick. I, I definitely think the main thing for Denver offensively is to have success running the ball. You look at the Colts pretty much the whole season, even like in even with them getting DeForest Buckner back, they have not been able to stop the run. Um, I really like what I saw from Jaleel last game. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping. That Sean and his team, because it's looking like we we we're gonna find out who the running back one is like in the second quarter for the game. So that's pretty much how it's been going. But I'm hoping that Jaleel and Estimate are the guys that go this game. I don't think this is a game where you can kind of play around and test things like you have been able to over the past few weeks, especially in the run game. Like you can't give Javante these chances. Look, and I look, that's just me. I think Jaleel needs to be the guy. The Colts are giving up. I mean, they gave up like 70 each to Ramondre and Gibson. They gave up like 80 to Brees Hall. So they're, I mean, they're look, they're giving up yardage in the run game. And I think Jaleel is the guy that you got to feed. Um, so that I would I would say that's my first key to victory. My second key to victory, obviously, is find a way to limit the, the Colts in this passing game. I don't know if Riley Moss is gonna play or not play or not. He's questionable, but it's looking like he might not go. But I thought I will say was interesting in what I what I thought was that how they basically they basically said, you know, that Sean and them are kind of deciding what to do if they want to just force him to go out there and play or not. I thought that was really interesting. So he might play like if they feel like that he that this is because it, it's the biggest game of the year. Yeah. So he might go. But I think you got to find a way to limit the passing game for the Colts. Not in they're not really that special. But anytime they connect, Anthony Richard connects each catches for 20, 15, 20 yards. So, and I'm not going to lie to you, I just, I'm smelling in a Donnie Mitchell breakout game. I'm smelling it. I don't know what it is. Just my gut is telling me they haven't really been connected with him all year long. I got to meet his uncle interviewing um, fans at the NRG and, bro, this dude is so good. And I'm I'm just smelling it right now. If we go out there with Levi Wallace or even Chris Abrams drain, like I'm really hoping we find a way to limit this passing game. Because look, if you want to be honest from a player and a talent perspective, they match up very well with our secondary, not Pat, but everybody else, Alec Pierce, Michael Pittman, uh, Madani Mitchell, who's the other guy? Josh, Josh Downs. Downs. Yeah, Josh Downs. Yeah, I mean, they they match up really well. Um, and then my final key to victory, just get after Anthony Richardson as much as possible. Um, I, I, I think for sure that's just pretty much it. I mean, the Colts' offensive line has not been great all year. They've been having bad tackle play all year, and I think Nick Benito and Jonathan Cooper, they really get going kind of like – Right after the first quarter, they they really start getting it going. So I, I expect Vance to continue with those blitzes. You just got to be really careful because if you don't have Raleigh Moss's game, you're going to be aggressive like that. You better have safety help for whoever is on the outside uh, next to uh, next to PS2. But before I let Jordan go and give his keys, I want to just say one thing, one matchup that is I'm kind of nervous on is Shane Steichen versus Vance Joseph. I'm I don't know. I'm just because Vance does not adjust well mid game and Shane Steichen does that. I'm very nervous about, but um, I think overall the Broncos will, should be fine. But look, man, Vance Joseph had a great year. Um, but Shane Steichen is one of the best offensive minds in the league and he's good 
at really good at putting mismatches all over the field. Like he's gonna try to get those some of those receivers on our linebackers and our safeties and let them go to work. So I I will say I'm kind of nervous about that. I agree with that. I mean, I have three key to victories, but they're they're all under one on brother, and it really boils down to just don't make the Colts' weakness some just a strength all of a sudden. Like, for example, their defense, you already know Gus Bradley and his cover three defense, they're going to give you all the completions that you want in the world. I mean, yeah. it is just a simple fact. It is a known fact in the NFL world that that cover three defense and what Gra- Gus Bradley runs, that simple just defense that anybody can just pick apart. We had we need to have a feast day passing-wise. We, we can't have a bad day passing-wise or not. It's going to be a long day. And that's how you know things aren't right. So if we're not passing the ball great and our passing game's not there, then we're in for a bit of a, a grinding game. But that's first. Just don't make that a, a strength all of a sudden. So our playmakers better show up uh, on Sunday. I'm expecting a big game for Marvin Mims again and uh, even Devon Bailey. I think both of them are going to have a good game against uh, this defense. Don't make Anthony Richardson all of a sudden a great passer. He yeah. struggles with just – easy throws he will make the big explosive throw but that quick game short game and even intermediate game he struggles with as well just don't make that a strength all of a sudden pressure him like how j max said make it uncomfortable for him and you have to tackle him when they run those quarterback powers quarterback sweeps quarterback runs all they do that is a big ass individual i saw him in person uh when i was there in indy for that preseason game and my god i did not know quarterbacks can't look like that i mean jesus christ he is i mean so tackling and getting him on the ground first is going to be important but yeah this colts team they are very inconsistent and that's putting it nicely they do have pieces on that team that are very talented but in terms of all just making it mesh well that it's kind of a little shaky um so again I, i like the broncos chances in this game Again, Colts defense, not that great. I'm not a big believer in Gus Bradley. I think Sean Payne's going to have a field day with that. I think that matchup between play callers, that's very much in favor of us. And I think, again, Bo Nix is going to have another great day. But if you talk to others, he's just a you know average to below average quarterback. But, listen, I, I'm expecting a big day out of Bo Nix, big day out of our defense. I think Vance Joseph is going to put the pressure on Anthony Richardson and make those plays. The only thing I have – regret or not regret just questions about or concerns is just like how j-mac said that cornerback two spot that ba- that backup corner right behind ps2 we just don't know how it's gonna look like because if it's levi wallace listen oh, I'm a big, if I'm, I'm a big big donnie mitchell fan i've talked about him before the draft and even after the draft he will have one of those games and he hasn't had one yet because he's been with anthony richardson and joe Flacco. i mean there's been a lot of moving pieces in indianapolis but this will just be a game for him yeah, I was going to ask you about guys about that because there's a lot of people asking about what are they going to do at that position. There's still a chance they could straight up just roll Riley Moss out, up out there, but I really, I strongly, I strongly disagree with anybody who thinks that. But I mean, it's still possible. I think, me personally, I think they're going to have Chris Adams drain start out there because why else did they have him in those final that final drive or so um, replace Levi Wallace? I mean, I could low key see. I would hate this, but I could low-key see them going back to Levi. I don't think it'll happen, though. Lord. I think Chris Abrams drain is going to get his first NFL start. That's crazy for him to say, though, because I Van Joseph just almost never does that. I mean, we're talking about this is going to be his second active game in the NFL that they might start him. So, I don't know, man. It's really going to go. They could low-key start Damari Mathis, too. Oh, my God. No. At that point, you just start Chris Abrams drain. Like, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I think I think out of the performance that um I think they could go with Mathis. I think the performance that uh Levi Wallace put out though, like I don't think in your right mind you go back to that. I mean, if you go back to Levi Wallace, it says a lot about Van Joseph. He should have been that's, cut. Yeah, that but that that that's me putting it as nice as possible. If you go back to Levi Wallace, that reflects a lot on Van Joseph, a lot because ain't no way in. I mean, what the hell is this, uh, Nathaniel Hackett with Melvin Gordon? Yeah, man, you could fumble four times, but we got confidence here. You're going to be our starter. Hell no. You gave up. You gave up everything. You gave up all the most all the touchdowns Cleveland had. You gave up shit to almost, what, two, over 200 yards? Yeah. I mean, bro, I don't think you could do that against the Colts. Like, you just can't. Um, but I do want to say one more thing I do want to point out. I think Corlin Sutton is kind of due for a big game. They're probably going to line up Womack on him. 
And just to throw out there, Corlin Sutton, I know I've shitted on him a lot, and I feel like it was deservingly so he's playing that bad in the first half of the season, but he's been picking it up. He he has been the best third down receiver in the league. He's um on third down, first in receptions, first in receiving yards, first in first downs, and he's tied for first with receptions over 25 yards. So, and that's on third down. So look. Third down is going to be key in this game. I do not want to see the Colts having the ball a lot. Like Jordan said, you got to get really active in his passing game. And I do think we saw a lot of that in the Browns game, kind of Sean going away for the run game a little bit and yeah. just really letting Bo unleash. I do want to see a little bit more of that because, like you say, you, the Colts' one strength they do have that, well, I'll say not, not that they have, but that can be – shown is the run game you still got guys like DeForest Buckner Grover Stewart Zaire Franklin EJ Speed you got a lot of guys they their front seven is kind of the strength of that defense the secondary is the bad part of it so I mean especially with our running game that is it's not really good like I could definitely see Sean being heavy on the past this game and hey look I'm all here for it man get guys like Troy like Jordan said Marvin Mims uh, Devon Vele, especially get those guys involved because I think if Denver gets out to an early lead, we got this game. But if we let the just hang around, they're one of those teams where they'll they'll just as soon as the fourth quarter hit, Anthony Richardson will just turn into something different, and then you got Dennis Scary. But I definitely think the the number one objective in this game is who's starting outside of pass or tan. That's gonna change everything. If it's Chris Abrams drain. I'm okay with that. Do I think he's just gonna be complete shutdown? No, he's gonna give up. He's gonna give up. He's gonna he's gonna give up some. But I mean, it's better than the alternative. But I'm hoping that they just say, you know, Raleigh go out there and play. I mean, because my opinion, even if Raleigh goes out there and plays this game, and they say and say they they play him this game, but sit him the next game, I'm fine with that. Just depending on how everything goes. But this is such a huge game where you 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 need him this game, like. I can't stress that enough how much I've seen his defenses without him in his bag. We need Riley Moss for this game. Listen, if you if you force the Colts to a drop back passing game, I'm happy with it. If we jump out to an early lead, make them pass the ball early and get away from their running game, that's, how you get them. that's all I got to say. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the score predictions. Um, I got the Bronx. I mean, to be honest, I mean, I don't want to jinx this by any means, but I don't see the Colts like – winning this game i really don't i understand the importance of this game but as long as chris am's drain plays at least dude i think honestly if he plays just like mid at best i still think we're beating we're beating them like by a comfortable margin um i got the broncos in this one 26 to 17 i just i don't i don't trust anthony richardson against our defense um i personally think this is one of the toughest defensive tests of his career on the road on the road in the most important game of his career I understand Riley Moss is not playing, but um, someone was telling me that Pastor Tan is not ready for Alec Pierce. Yeah, okay, buddy. <laughs> and people are telling me that jo Jonathan Taylor – I understand Jonathan Taylor. He's he's playing exceptional football, but this is not the 1,800-yard back that we're seeing in Indy. And yeah. we're talking about the Broncos defense. Hey, guys, Colts fans, we're talking about the team leading the NFL in pressures and sacks. Come back to this. The Colts are not beating the Broncos. Yeah, um, I have the Broncos winning this game. Um my score prediction, I'll probably say 26, 26, 13. Um, I just think, I don't know, man. I have, I have, I have one of those feelings about, you know, the game against the Browns and we saw how close that turned out. I kind of have a feeling about this game. It, it may take something late for us to get to seal this. I, I just don't know, man. I feel like Shane Steichen is finna put together the best game plan that he's ever had. Like I just, I have that feeling. He's had a bye week to prepare for this game. He's going to be really tuned in. I just – I'm hoping the Broncos can pull this one out because, I mean, I, it just – it's it's a trap game, and it's a – the Colts have nothing to lose. Like, that's that's the thing that really scares me. They have nothing to lose because if they – they're not even favored to – nobody thinks they're going to win this game. We have everything to lose, and they have nothing to lose. So, but I'm going Broncos. I got Broncos. I got Broncos 31, Colts 16. I think Broncos put up a lot of points. I don't think Sean Payne I – well, I do think Sean Payne is going to take over that that matchup with Gus Bradley. I think he's going to run laps around him. I think uh, the Colts get three field goals and a touchdown. I think Vance Joseph does a good job against Shane Stacking, pressures, pressures Anthony Richardson and forces the Colts into a drop-back passing game early on in the game, and the uh, Broncos win. Yeah, I, I just don't think Anthony Richardson is going to be able to help like handle our pass rush personally. Um, I think that's wow. the one thing where they're not being talked about enough is I understand 
that we're not having our cornerback two in this game, but our pass rush against their offensive line, I don't know. I mean, I, I really I, – I do favor it in this matchup. I think that's going to play a big factor, and that makes it easier for the secondary. So um, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you're listening on YouTube, please make sure you guys leave a like, comment down below your score prediction. We'll be coming back to those after the game on Sunday. Looking forward to one of the biggest Broncos games in the last eight, nine years. Um, really highly anticipated matchup. But with that being said, I'm your host, Amir Farrell, with our co-host, J-Mac, and Jordan. We'll see you the next one. Peace out, everybody.